If I call out an activity and that describes who you are, you're going to go ahead and be one. And to be one, you're going to cross over this way. Chances are, most of us have crossed the line. When you look in the mirror, you do not like what you see. Or maybe you've pushed someone across the line. If you have ever received a text message or Facebook message or email that had a hurtful message. Hurtful messages like the ones Matthew Kaplan's brother Josh received in middle school from people he thought were his friends. All my friends got phone text messaging and cyberbullying came into a huge play and so I got quite a few nasty texts and it, it really hurt. I probably cried maybe every day in fourth and fifth grade. He started to withdraw into himself. His self-confidence was kind of shaken. They were calling him little names like jerkhead. They didn't realize that the words that they were saying hurt. When somebody says to him, you suck, he starts to think, maybe I suck. If that's how I'm being perceived, not just by one person, but all of these people who are sending me these messages. To teach kids about the harmful, hurtful impact of bullying, Matthew created a peer-to-peer anti-bullying educational experience. I wanted to kind of create this program to be these kids' self-advocate. He calls it the B1 Project, a positive peer pressure program. When we think about peer pressure, we usually think bad word. Yeah. But you don't think it's a bad word. I think peer pressure is a, can be a positive thing. What if that peer pressure could be used towards inclusiveness and not exclusiveness? We respect each other. Matthew leads with the passion of a minister and the compassion of an older brother. Be yourself to shine your light. He inspired more than 150 Arizona teachers and high schoolers to serve as team leaders. I have taught over 2,300 students, and Matthew stands out to me because he role models the positive culture that we expect at our school. Middle school is really this critical window. A lot of programs work more for high school students, but by high school it's already too late. Bullying behavior is already ingrained. It's also a critical age where many get their hands on technology and can hide behind social media. They can either be really supportive with it or really destructive. And we want kids to recognize that they have that power. The day begins with interactive games Go. and lots of fun. Put your right hand up and grab hands with someone else in the By the end of the day-long program, the kids connect. Compassion grows. You can see and feel a shift in the kids as they line up for the last activity. Remember that if you see someone on the other side and you want to show them that you're there for them, you can do that by throwing up this sign right here. Be one if you have ever felt alone or afraid. They are feeling exactly as you are. What's really important is that that mindset doesn't go away. This whole process really inspired me to think is that every day there are a hundred opportunities to love another person and to be loved. We are not just any future. We're the only future. If compassion had a face, this is what it would look like. This is what it would feel like. This is what it would be like. Each of us has something to contribute to make the future a better place. The future already looks brighter because Matthew and these kids are the ones illuminating it. One, two, three, go.